Hello everyone, it's Ricardo Costa here and this is day 3 of our 10-day series on mastering Photoshop. Today we'll be focusing on layers and masks. Layers are an essential component of Photoshop and I like to think of them as individual sheets of paper. You can stack these sheets on top of each other to create your artwork. Think of it like having a piece of glass over a picture. If the glass is completely opaque, you won't be able to see the picture underneath. But if the glass is partially transparent, you will, you will be able to see parts of the picture throughout the glass. In today's lesson, we'll be exploring the different types of layers and how to use masks to create more complex compositions. So, grab your coffee, settle in and let's dive into the world of layers and masks in Photoshop. If you are new to using Photoshop, you will soon discover that layers are the foundation for any artwork created in this program. The Layers panel plays a critical role in coordinating your entire composition. In this tutorial, we will delve deeper into the concept of layers in Photoshop. In case you don't see the Layers panel, you can make it visible by going to the top menu, selecting the Window option and click on Layers. You can find my Layers panel on the right hand side of the screen. To follow along with this tutorial, you will need to access a document that I've specifically prepared for this video. You can locate this document in day 3 of the project folder, which you can download for free. The download link is provided in the description. Once you have downloaded the project folder, open the day 3 folder and then select the layers.pst file. This should give you a layout that resembles the one shown in this tutorial. If we take a closer look at the layers panel over on the right, we can see that each element in the canvas area is represented by its own layer uh, individually, all stacked on top of each other in rows. Each layer has a name on the right and an image thumbnail on the left that give us a quick preview of what's inside the layer, along with the type of layer it is. The Layers panel essentially works by stacking layers on top of each other in a hierarchy, much like you would stack sheets of paper on the top of each other. The layer at the top of the stack will have the most visibility, while the one at the bottom will have the least visibility, hidden by any layer above it. Now, as you start creating in Photoshop, you'll encounter various types of creative documents that will require different types of layer. These layers can be identified by the icons that appear on the layer in the Layers panel. In this document, we have two types of layers, raster layers, which are represented by thumbnails, on the left displaying the placement inside the document, and type layers, which have a T icon on the left. It's important to pay close attention to these icons as they indicate the contents of your document. Now, when we are working with layers in Photoshop, it's important to be able to select them individually. As we select a layer, it will become highlighted, making it clear which layer is currently selected. This allows us to focus on specific layers and apply various effects, but we'll get into that in more detail later. In Photoshop, the Layers panel organizes elements in a hierarchy from top to bottom, with each element treated separately on its own layer. If we want to move a particular element around in the canvas area, we need to use the Move tool, which is located at the top of the Tools menu on the left-hand side. You can recognize it by the white arrow with a crosshair next to it. Depending on which layer we have selected in the Layers panel, we'll be able to move the contents of the layer around. For example, let's say I click on the orange square layer in the Layers panel. Then I'll select the Move tool and move my mouse cursor into the canvas area, clicking and dragging to move the orange square around. You'll notice that only the contents of, your, of that layer are moving. I'll quickly undo to move by going back to the edit menu, I click undo, moving it back to its original position. Next, I'll select the top type layer in the layers panel and use the move tool to click and drag it around the canvas area to reposition it if I want. Again, we're only moving the contents of that layer around. So, to move objects around in the canvas area, we need to first have the layer selected and then use the Move tool. Now, take a closer look at the artwork we have here. We see what appears to be a blue square in the background, 
an orange square on top of it, then a yellow square followed by a purple square, a blue circle and some text in on top of it. However, if we look at the layers panel, we can see that the layer structure doesn't match this arrangement. Surprisingly, the blue circle is actually positioned below the purple square. If we select the blue circle layer in the layers panel and use the move tool, the top arrow icon, we can click and drag the object on the canvas to see that it's actually behind the purple square, but on top of the yellow square. The layers panel confirmed this. Now let's try to moving the middle text layer. If we do so, we'll see that it's actually behind the purple square, even though it appears to be on top of them at the first glance. It's important to keep an eye on the layers panel to understand the true structure of any composition, and to make sure that what we see on the canvas is actually aligned with the layer arrangement. If we want to edit the layer structure on your, of our artwork, we can easily do so by clicking and dragging a layer in the layers panel. For instance, if we want to bring the blue circle to the top, we can click on this layer and drag it up to the desired position. As we drag, we'll see that the layer will be placed wherever we release the click. By rearranging the layers, we can alter the composition of our artwork to achieve different effects. Let's talk about layer masks now. So instead of just using your eraser tool and permanently destroying parts of your image, Layer masks give you the power to non-destructively edit your image. That means you can undo your mistakes and make changes to your image even years later. How cool is that? So, to understand how this works, go to Project Folder, open the Day 3 folder and finally open up the file Image 03. To use a layer mask, simply click on the layer mask icon, which looks like a white rectangle with a dark circle cut out of it, you can find it down here. When you click on the layer mask icon, it creates a white area next to your layer. This is your layer mask. If the layer mask is completely white, then your layer will be completely visible. If it's black, your layer will be completely invisible. To make changes, we'll use a brush tool. You can find it in the toolbar on the left side or by hitting the B key. To make something invisible, we'll paint with black on our layer mask. For example, if uh, we want to hide the coffee mug, we'll paint black over it. But don't worry, because we're using a layer mask, we can always bring it back by painting with white. So now let's make something interesting. Let's open up the image 04 placed in the same folder as image 3. Now let's copy the image inside our coffee mug by simply drag the image from the folder above our coffee image. Now. In the layer mask icon, it creates a white area next to your layer. With the brush tool, let's paint in black the areas we don't want to show. For this example, will be everything surround the coffee mug. Adjust a little bit over there and here. And there you go. Everything we don't want to be visible is now hidden and we created a very interesting image. But if I want to recover parts of the sky, I can simply paint it on white and recover it. Layer masks are incredibly simple, but they are also incredibly powerful. With just a few clicks and brush strokes, you can non-destructively edit your image and make it look more exactly what you want. Alright, so let's talk about blending modes. They're really cool because they allow us to blend different layers together in unique ways. So here in Photoshop we have a bunch of blending modes to choose from. Don't worry about memorizing all of them, because they're broken down into groups and the most commonly used are the top of each group. For example, we have the Darken group, which includes blending modes like Darken and Multiply, which are the most commonly used in this group. Then we have the Lighten group, with blending modes like Lighten and Screen, the overlay group is also commonly used with blending modes like overlay and soft light. As I scroll through the different blending modes, you'll notice that they produce very different effects in the image. It can really change the look of your image in some amazing ways. Just remember that the layer order really matters. Whatever layer is on top will affect everything beneath it. So that's blending modes in a nutshell. Alright, so let's take a closer look at the layers panel in Photoshop. 
on the left side of each layer we have these little eye icons that control the visibility of each layer. If I click on the eye icon for a layer, that layer will disappear from the canvas area. This is just toggling the visibility of the layer, not deleting it. You can easily bring it back by clicking the eye icon again. So remember, these icons are used to toggle the visibility of layers. Now, as you create new layers in Photoshop, you may want to rename them for easier organization. To do this, simple double click on the layer name in the layers panel and type in the new name. For example, I will rename this to tutorial layer. Moving on, in Photoshop we can also adjust the opacity of layers. This makes the layer more transparent, allowing the layers beneath it to show through. So adjust to adjust the opacity, first select the layer in the layers panel, then up in the top right of the layers panel you'll see the opacity option. You can either type in the exact opacity you want or click and drag the opacity slider to adjust it. Lowering the opacity of a layer can create interesting effects like blending colors together. For example, if I lower the opacity of the blue circle, it blends into the yellow square in the background, creating a new color tone. As you adjust the opacity of different layers, you'll see how they can interact with each other and create unique effects. So, as we progress through this course, you'll find that sometimes creating a new element in a composition requires creating a new layer. So, creating a new layer is quite simple, but it's important to remember which layer is currently selected. When you create a new layer, it will be created right above the selected layer in the Layers panel. For example, I'm going to select a yellow square and create a new layer. I can either click the Add icon in the, at the bottom of the Layers panel, or go to the top right and click the drop down and select New Layer. But you can also use the shortcut Shift Command N to create a new layer. By clicking the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel, a new layer is created above the yellow square layer, called layer 1 by default. If you continue to create more layers, the names will increment such as layer 2, layer 3 and so on. In this example, I'm going to double click on the name and rename it as an empty layer. The layer is transparent and ready to be worked on. To remove or delete the layer, select it and press the delete icon in the right bottom right of the layers panel or use the backspace key on your keyboard. As you create complex compositions in Photoshop, you may find yourself with excessive amounts of layers in your layers panel. To keep your layers organized, it's useful to create layer groups. To create a group, click the create new group icon at the bottom of the layer panel or select new group from the top right menu. Remember to select the layer before creating the group, as the group will be created directly above. For example, I want to place all the shape layers of my composition inside a new group. With the orange square selected, I'm going to click the Add New Layer Group icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. A new group, called Group 1, is created by default, which I will rename as Shapes. I will then click and drag my shape layers into the group. As you drag the layers, they will automatically be placed at the bottom of the group. After dragging the layers, reposition them into the group to get the structure you want. The layer group has a toggle on the left which allows you to toggle the visibility of the layer group contents. Once the layers are contained in a group folder, you can move the entire group contents around using the move tool. You can also move individual layers by selecting them inside the group. To toggle the visibility of the group layer, simply click in the Layers panel. You can also move your groups around in the Layers panel to alter the layer structure. By creating layer groups, you can streamline your layer structure and have control of the elements of your composition. And that's a wrap on Photoshop layers and masks. Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of how layers work and how you can use them to create complex compositions in Photoshop. We've also covered the basics of layer masks and how you can use them to either reveal parts of a layer. Remember, layers are an incredible powerful tool in Photoshop and can help you achieve all sorts of effects and designs. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to create stunning and professional looking graphics. 
photos and artwork. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more Photoshop tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.